Ah, do you hear that? No, what? Silence. The silence of back to school. Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait. Oh, now I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice sound it is. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like Alex is in a good place this school year. His IEP is really solid now, and his team seems committed to his success. Mm. We just need to make sure that, you know, we stay on top of things. That's great. I wish all of my friends were feeling so positive about the start of the school year. <sighs> uh, what, what's happening? Remember that friend I was telling you about a few months ago? The one whose daughter with Down syndrome is heading off to middle school? Is this the friend that was having trouble convincing the school to keep her daughter in an inclusive setting? Yes, that's the one. Even though this student has always done well in the regular education classroom, the school wanted to put her in the life skills class. Actually, they still want to put her in there. Oh, dear. You mean they still haven't resolved the situation? No. They went through the mediation process without reaching an agreement. It looks like the parents are going to request a due process hearing now due process? I remember learning about that in my advocacy workshop that I took over the summer, but it sounded to me like something that should be avoided if possible. I think most parents feel that way. It could be an expensive process and there's usually a lot of stress involved. It's always better to have an open, productive dialogue with your child's IEP team so you can resolve the issues without going to due process. I take it your friend is beyond that point. I'm afraid so. She talked with the IEP team several times last school year and even had an IEP facilitator from the Office of Dispute Resolution come in and try to resolve the situation. When that didn't work, she went to mediation. Unfortunately, she and her daughter's team are still unable to reach an agreement. Last week, she initiated a due process hearing request. Hmm. Well, what's involved in that? Wait, let me guess. Lots of forms, right? <laughs> of course. My friend had to complete a due process complaint notice and send that to both the school and the Office of Dispute Resolution. Filling out that form took some careful consideration. When parents request a due process hearing, they need to be very specific about the problem and the action they want the hearing officer to consider. A due process hearing officer is only allowed to decide on the issues included in the official complaint. So, if you forget to include something in the complaint form, it won't be addressed at the meeting? Not unless the hearing officer or the school allows you to amend your request. Sometimes that happens, but it's always a good idea to be as thorough as possible in the initial hearing request. Oh, I see. So, is due process voluntary like mediation is? Does the school have to attend the hearing? You know, simply because the parents have requested it. Great question. The procedural safeguards give parents the right to request a due process hearing, but the complaint must first be considered sufficient by the party receiving the complaint. Oh, in plain English, please. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, if the school looks at my friend's complaint form and finds that she did not include all the necessary information, they can say that the request is not sufficient. To do so, they must notify her and the hearing officer in writing within 15 calendar days of receiving her complaint. Otherwise, the request is deemed sufficient and the school has to schedule a resolution session again within 15 days. Well, what happens at the resolution session? It's similar to a mediation session with a few key differences. Unlike the mediation session, parents can bring an attorney to the resolution session. The school district is also permitted to bring their attorney, but only if the parent's attorney will be present. Who typically attends from the school district? Well, that's up to the parents and the local education agency, or LEA, to decide. Typically, the parents and the LEA invite members of the IEP team they feel can help to clarify the situation and provide needed input to the discussion. Once the right people are assembled, they discuss the issue and try again to come to an agreement. It sounds like a way to give everyone one last chance to resolve things before involving a hearing officer. Exactly. The resolution session, like mediation, is designed to help the two parties avoid a hearing. My friend may try to waive the resolution session. She has the option to do that since she has already been through the mediation process. Regardless, there are a lot of steps a parent and a school district can take before deciding to follow through with a due process hearing.
And when a due process hearing is inevitable? Well, then the hearing officer schedules a date for the hearing. Five days before the hearing, the parents and the school must exchange a list of documents and witnesses they will use when presenting their case. Wow, that sounds pretty intense. <laughs> it can be, which is why most parents choose to hire an attorney with a strong background in special education law. What if the family can't afford an attorney? Will the state provide one for them? I'm afraid not. The procedural safeguards give parents the right to bring an attorney to a due process hearing, but they don't ensure legal representation for parents who can't afford an attorney. I see. Well, so I'm imagining the actual hearing is like a legal hearing that you might see on TV? Similar, yes. Basically, the parents explain their child's situation to the hearing officer. They present documentation, witnesses, and experts to support their case. The school also gets to present their side of the issue and may bring experts and witnesses to the hearing as well. Both sides get to cross-examine each other's witnesses. So yes, it's pretty much like a typical legal hearing. After hearing both sides of the argument, the hearing officer must make a written decision on the issue within 45 calendar days. Wow. Due process sounds like a long and lengthy and exhausting process but I guess a necessary one in some cases. I'm glad to know that the procedural safeguards guarantee parents this right. So what happens to the poor child while all this is going on? Well, just like in mediation, the child has the right to stay in their current placement until everything is resolved. In the case of my friend's daughter, she gets to remain in the inclusive setting while the due process drama plays out. You know, I'm sure your friend is grateful for a supportive friend like you right about now. Oh, thanks. I think she's also grateful for her attorney and her educational advocate as well. The details of due process can be very complicated. Parents can receive a lot of good information from the Office of Dispute Resolution and various advocacy organizations. But you're right. It does help to have the supportive friends at a time like this. <laughs>